Hey, this is Kyle, and today we're going to be looking at the T-Mobile 5G home internet gateway. So, I just received this from T-Mobile, so we're going to be uh, doing an unboxing, we're going to do a setup, and then we're going to do a speed test. So, in this um, area, it says that we are capable of their 5G um, Ultra, so that should be the ultra-wideband um, version of the T-Mobile 5G as well as the regular uh, 5G. So it should have um, very good signal strength as long as we place it uh, near a window that's aiming towards the tower. So without further ado, let's go ahead and open the back. We'll pull the box up. And inside we get a refurbished um, device limited warranty. So I'm assuming this is a uh, refurbished 5G gateway. It also says that it'll have the quick start guide, power adapter, and an ethernet cable. So this would be the quick start guide, I'm guessing. Yep, so T-Mobile home internet 5G gateway quick start guide. As well as the safety and regulatory information and terms and conditions of using um, this device. So let's take a look at this quick start guide. Uh, it says position it near a power outlet, preferably near a window or an upper floor. Connect it to power. Uh, your SIM card is pre-installed. So we also included an ethernet cable for your convenience. This is optional for setup and can be used for connecting things like mesh network devices. And then uh, simply you just have to download the T-Mobile internet app on your smartphone to begin setting up your gateway. And then there's a support. If you need uh, help, they do have a customer care that will help you set it up. So let's go ahead and give that a try. So we'll continue opening it up and it is packaged very well. As you can see the cardboard uh, keeps this gateway intact. So here is the 5G gateway. It's the Nokia 5G21 gateway gray. And these are the um, SSID and the password, so your Wi-Fi name and the Wi-Fi password um, for the setup. It also has a battery, but it has an input um, 12 volt that is included in the box. So that's the device. Look inside. Some more cardboard, as well as a power adapter and the Ethernet cable. And that's everything that is included in the box. So let's go ahead and we will power this device on. This will not be um, optimal placement. I'm not going to be putting it near a window just so that I can power the device up for you guys and set this device up. So on the back of the uh, gateway, you do see the power adapter. You can attach a UPS. There's an on-off switch as well as a USB-C and two Ethernet ports. So you can see we plugged in the power, so now we have to hit the on button. And there is a screen at the top, so it says T-Mobile. And I'm assuming um, that when it boots up the first time, it's going to take a moment just so that it can download um, a bunch of the software updates, any firmware updates that have happened since they um, produced this device. So we'll go ahead and just hold this until it turns itself on here. So we can see once it booted up, uh, it is showing a connection, so being that we're located in the center of the home, it's not going to be very strong. Um, if I go further towards a window, um, it'll obviously the connection will uh, get better. And this is a touchscreen, and this is located on the uh, top of the device. It says zero devices connected. It's charging that internal battery. There's settings, 
So you can change languages, alerts. So there's an alert for the internal battery being low. And then uh, there are messages. It says, hi, Ethel. Uh, my name is not Ethel. So um, this is obviously a refurbished device that wasn't reset properly. So I'm just going to go ahead and delete the messages. Then we'll go ahead and connect a device to it. So right here we have um, our phone that'll have Wi-Fi. So settings, Wi-Fi, and T-Mobile. Remember, we find this password on the bottom of the, the router that we received. And once we click join, it should be connected. And to verify that, we can also check and we see one connected device, which is this phone right here. So following uh, the instruction booklet, we have powered it up, we've waited for it, and now we just need to download um, the application. So we're going and we're going to aim the QR code at it, and it should bring it to the website that'll allow us to start up the internet services. So it's going to have us download an application called T-Mobile Internet. All right, so we can see that the application is downloading, and now we will go ahead and open it. So it says setup device. When you open the app, check gateway status. Is an upgrade in progress, and we see that there is no upgrade in progress. It just shows connected. So we will go ahead and say that it is not updating. So next, skip video, skip placement assistant, because I'll go ahead and uh, move it towards the window after this video. Scan the code. So it's asking for the code that's on the bottom of the gateway. So we'll go ahead and just aim it. And now it'll allow you to change the SSID and password of your Wi-Fi, so you can change it to whatever you like. And then once you click Submit, it'll just say Configuring Network. And now it says uh, that my new Wi-Fi name is ready. And it prompts you, uh, prompts your phone to join that new network that you connected. So it says establishing connection. This will take up to 30 seconds. Do not to switch to other apps during this time. Okay, so now we see on uh, the router that again, one device is connected. And now it's asking to change the administrator password so that whoever connects to um, this gateway can't uh, change that Wi-Fi um, name or the password. So I'm just going to go ahead and change that. And it says success, your setup is complete. Okay, and inside of the application, uh, you see connection quality says good. It says poor, weak, good, very good, and excellent. So that's the five bars. And we see that we are on the third bar because it is located in the center of the house and not located uh, near the window where its optimal location is. And devices, you see uh, the connected phones. If you go to network, this is where you can, again, configure that SSID, the password, or um, the bands that you want it to be. So if you want it to be 2.4 or 5, you would have to create another um, separate one so that you can make it just 2.4. But for this sake, this is a dual band router and I want, for ease of simplicity, I want my 2.5, 2.4 and 5 gigahertz network to be combined. And I'll let the device that is connecting to it um, decide if it wants to connect to the 5 gigahertz or the 2.4 gigahertz. So you can see the encryption method, AES, and the password version, uh, WPA, 
and WPA2, which will allow it to connect to the most amount of devices, even though it's not the newest WPA version, which is WPA2 and WPA3. Um, the WPA allows you to connect uh, older devices that are have a less um, strict security standard. So I'm just going to leave that as is. And then there is also a support. Okay, so let's go ahead and run a speed test of it when it is at a good speed. So when it has a good connection quality to the tower, and then we'll run another one uh, when it's near a window and has better connection quality. So open speed test. You can see it's a T-Mobile server and we're on an iPhone SE second generation. And wow, would you look at those speeds. 530 megabits per second down. 550. 559 megabits per second download. And looks like somewhere between 10 and 15 megabits per second upload. Oh, now 16, 17, 18. 19 megabytes per second upload. And that is when it's only at a connection strength of three, which is good. So as you can see on the router, you can see that's with a good connection. So let's go ahead and move it to a uh, better location and let's go ahead and run another speed test. Okay, so you can see that the router is no longer behind us and that's because I moved it closer towards a window and I found it pretty nice that I never lost Wi-Fi. It does have a backup battery, and as soon as it lost power from uh, the power source in the wall, the power outlet, it kicked over to the battery. And then the device was still on and still providing me Wi-Fi, so I found that to be um, pretty neat. So we'll bring the phone back in. You can see we are connected uh, to Wi-Fi still which is super strong signal because right now I'm 35 feet away from it and we still have uh, full Wi-Fi uh, signal strength. So let's go ahead and run a speed test. You can see T-Mobile again uh, with the T-Mobile test server. We'll go ahead and click go. And we're still just getting those amazing uh, 480 to 500 megabyte per second uh, download speeds. And that's still 35 feet away. And look at those upload speeds. We saw 30, somewhere between 15 and 30 megabytes per second I'm seeing. And the reason we went with T-Mobile Home Internet is because it has um, those higher upload speeds, those amazing download speeds, and there is no data cap. And it's $50 a month compared to uh, the normal uh, Cox internet that was, I believe, 500 megabytes per second down and 10 up for $130 a month with a data cap of 1.25 terabytes. So if these speeds continue with this 475 megabits per second down and the 36 up uh, with the amount of internet that we use, this will be an absolute game changer since that router also does have uh, three or two ethernet ports, we can plug anything in um, that we want if you're not only using Wi-Fi. So you can plug your smart TV in to ethernet just to get that um, connection as well. So we will do a check-in in a few weeks on the sustained speeds and uh, if it's reliable. All right, thank you for watching and you have a great day.